The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host, guest, random reptoid, or chupacabra may not necessarily reflect those of AM950 Radio, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Now, it's time to step into the unknown. There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering up the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story, this is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, UFOlogy, Bigfoot, and so much more. My name is Greg Bakken, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Well, post-St. Patrick's Day, actually, since we're the day after here. But, you know, I hope everyone was safe. You know, it's, it's, always, it's always a fun night, right? But it's also one that, uh, you know, people get a little weird, don't they? They get a little crazy out there. And I'm, I'm not going to say I hadn't been one of those people in a past life, well, this life, years ago, I guess. But uh, nevertheless, it's uh, certainly, you know, it's it, you got to be careful out there. I really hope everybody had a great time, but also a safe time as well. You know, you can tell I'm getting older because that's that's where I'm going these days. It's not so much, I hope you had a great party night. It's more of, I just hope that you were safe. So uh, there, that, that's a little bit of insight about myself. So here we are. St. Patty's Day, and we know we, we do tend to think about going out and having the green beer and stuff, but I think something else that uh, uh, may not get talked about a whole lot <clears throat> is just the fact that it's a beautiful time of year. It's spring. Spring is, is you know, things are blooming. You know, you, you think of green regardless, don't you, uh, whether it's St. Patty's Day or not, and it all is connected. It all works together, and, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to have us have a beautiful conversation and an uplifting conversation after uh, St. Patty's Day. And uh, I was very blessed, actually, that I was able to get a hold of my guest today and that we're going to have this fantastic conversation. Uh, Tannis Halliwell is an author, and she has written a number of books. But what we're going to be focusing on today is a book called The Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell, and, uh, I, you know, I'm really excited about this uh, because there is, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big story here. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, Tannis has written a lot about, uh, about elementals, uh, so I think we're just going to have a fantastic conversation, and I, I'm really looking forward uh, to this. So, Tannis, welcome to Ghost Box Radio. Well, thanks for having me, Greg. I'm looking forward to speaking with you about... Lloyd and Elementals as well. My goodness, I mean, what a and what a beautiful story. Um, uh, uh, just to be able to have this uplifting moment, and, and Lloyd talked to you, and I was talking with a friend about this, and you know, we we're all in a community that's all about uh, you know about spirits and all these uh, different um, uh, modalities that people don't, not everyone accepts and believes in and this is always my show is a safe place for that so we're talking about all this and and i said you know we're gonna i'm gonna be talking with uh tannis about uh about leprechauns and she's like i've never heard of anybody actually having a conversation with a leprechaun so this is a pretty this is pretty awesome uh well great and i'm glad that your friend was uh, intrigued by that as well so why don't we just kind of get started here uh, what what is and once again the book is called uh the book is called a leprechaun story as told by lloyd to tanis hallowell what is what is the story here what's going on it's lloyd's autobiography um i have been involved with lloyd he's been a friend of mine the leprechaun lloyd uh, for, oh, 35 years or so, wow. and I first met him when I went to the west coast of Ireland and rented a, a cottage, very old cottage, sight on scene, and it turned out to be occupied by Lloyd and uh, his family. So 
I thought it was just going to be for that summer, but he told me that in 10 years I'd have to write a book, which I did. It was called Summer with the Leprechauns, and um, and I've been working with elementals, uh, leprechauns, and all sorts of nature spirits ever since then. So it's a, it's a long time that I've had this relationship with Lloyd. Now, uh, do you- was this your first, was Lloyd your introduction to having communication with other entities like Elementals then? Not really. Okay. Um, I've been giving workshops all over the world on working and playing with Elementals, sure. uh, which is another word for nature spirits. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing that for three decades now. And I was a, a psychotherapist by training and had a practice, and I noticed after I met Lloyd, I, after I met the various elementals that I met during, um, during my summer in Ireland, that a lot of people who came to see me as humans for therapy had elemental, hy- they were like elemental hybrids. Had there were certain characteristics that I could tell that they weren't fully, fully human in our sense of what a human is, and so it started me on a whole journey, and so I added that to what I was teaching around the world. So it wasn't just what are elementals, how do they help the earth. It was people wanting to meet an elemental to work with themselves and also answering the question, hey, is it possible that I have some elemental heritage? So this encounter with Lloyd has turned into become much larger than I ever thought when I was, when I was in this cottage. So I have to ask, uh, and I and I do it with with a bit of delicacy because I I, I always have to you know it, you want to ask questions that you want to get an answer to, but you don't want to make it sound like that you're you're not respecting the uh, the the subject. But does does Lloyd look like a standard leprechaun? He it's it's a good question. Um, he dresses in old fashioned clothes. But he is a little larger, to me he's a little larger, than what a standard leprechaun uh, coming out of a cereal box or whatever, one of these cartoon characters would yeah. look like. Yeah. So he's about four feet tall, he's middle-aged, he has a bit of a paunch, um, and um, in his world... they're much longer lived in the elemental world that they live over 100 years easily, uh, hundreds of years, actually, sure. whereas humans, if we make it to 100 in good form, we're very lucky. Yeah. So he's been alive for over 100 years, and he only looks middle-aged. Got it, got it. And does he does he have uh, the attributes of, uh, like, a purebred Irish person, red hair, and... Uh, you know, I, I mean, I and I always imagine like leprechauns, the kind of the male leprechauns, not to have any kind of hair on the top of their head, like kind of the partial hair th- head uh, hair head thing. I, I'm just curious. <laughs> well, he does have reddish hair. Um, he also, though, wears a top hat. This is the his formal attire and the way that he likes to show himself to others. So dressed very spiffily, he's quite proud, and dressed very spiffily and with a with a top hat. So he could he could technically walk around uh, amongst us and, and not really cause too much of a like anyone going what is going on there because that's it's 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 not it doesn't sound like he he necessarily would stick out in a abnormal sort of way if he was within society or anything. Well, two things here, and okay. your readers, your listeners and readers of my books would probably ask the same question. They'd be saying, well, is this physical? Does she see it physically? Mm-hmm. So I need to say that 
just as in you're calling your program, you know, with with ghost in it, and some people see ghosts. Yeah. Um, it's the same way that uh, not everyone sees ghosts. I see other realms. Uh, I have since I was a child. Mm-hmm. And so I see ghosts or I see elementals or I can see angels or higher beings. Um, so that's how I see. Elementals live in a little higher frequency mm-hmm. than our third dimensional physical reality as humans. Sure. And, but, but as you have said, you can, you can see them out of the corner of your, of your eye, sometimes going very quickly, and you wonder, what was that? Mm-hmm. Um, so, or some people will hear somebody talking to them and they'll think, what was that? So, um, so we're starting to get closer to that frequency now. Humans are evolving to higher frequencies. And so we once were able to communicate and work with elementals and farmers who were close to the land knew about this and always left out food offerings uh, Mm -hmm. such as honey and oats and milk and things like that for the little people Um, all over the world. um, First Nations people believe in um, elementals. But we of the Western world have lost this, and we've closed our eyes and our ears, sort of our higher senses to these higher worlds but they're opening again that's the good news it is it is now i got i got a couple questions regarding that and some i might have to get to the other one after the break here but uh when when it comes to lloyd in his appearance and whatnot would he appear the same to everybody if he chose to appear to them or does he have different guises depending on who he's talking to that is an excellent question because i think what we do is we interpret these higher realities through our own filter. Um, So like when people are saying, oh, I've been talking to Archangel Michael, and you ask Mm -hmm. one person to describe what he's looking like, and then you ask someone else, and they could get quite different uh, images or interpretations. And does that mean that one person sees and the other person doesn't and is making it up? Not necessarily. It comes through our own filter of how we perceive things. Yeah, that makes and that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, so it, it's it's possible we don't know for sure, but it's possible that maybe Lloyd might look different to me. But it does it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's still Lloyd. That's right. That's uh, right. I mean, it's, and some people do write to me and say, "Oh gosh, your Lloyd was visiting with me." But a lot of people that I've worked with now, like I'd say, thousands of people, I've mm-hmm. helped them um, to find their own elementals that they can talk to. So, uh, I, so that's the good news. I, I think it's interesting because I suppose people would love to, after reading your book, the Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell. That they want to find Lloyd, but it's it's your point. It's like you gotta you gotta find who works for you. The the mut- there's that mutual attraction, if you will. Yeah, you do, and it could be that a goblin wants to work with them, or it could be an elf wants to work with them. Lloyd's work is is he travels all over the world, mm-hmm. and they travel can travel in space and time in a second just by thinking of where they want to go. And his work for over three, more than three decades, because he was doing this long before he ever met me, is to work with elementals that want to work with humans to help partner people up. And so he hijacked me, if you like, mm-hmm. to be his sidekick to uh, to get the humans who want to work with elementals. You're kind of the ambassador, in a sense. To for, Well, for I'm him. the ambassador, in a sense. But whenever I travel with Lloyd, he is he's called the Grand. And so everybody makes a big fuss of him, and I'm kind of like the sidekick or the straight person <laughs> in a comic act. 
So you don't have to be in Ireland for you now to to experience and, and get uh, get any sort of uh, messages from Lloyd or interactions with Lloyd. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, he comes to my home here in Canada. I give him tea. I give him oatmeal. Um, occasionally, I'll give him a little tipple of uh, Guinness or something. Oh, I bet so, he that. Uh, no, we we have a great relationship without me going to Ireland. That being said, I love going back to <laughs> Ireland, and I've been there many, many times. I love that. I love that. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's take our first break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with uh, Tannis Halliwell. We're going to talk about her book, The Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell. I have so many questions. This is amazing. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Need a stone to change your luck or break a curse? Try Larvikite, known for its hex-breaking powers. Need an herb to repel negative spirits? Try Rue, used to repel demons and jinn. Want to create a decoy so black magic can't touch you? Make a witch bottle. For more magical advice, visit Magus Books in Minneapolis. We've got the tools and the expert advice you need to succeed against the dark arts. Find us at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or at magusbooks.com. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search metamorphosisconnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Greg Bakken here. I've told you about the -the out-of-the-world roast beef sandwiches at Maverick's Real Roast Beef, but I haven't told you about their Philly steak sandwiches, turkey bacon avocado sandwich, BLT, crispy chicken, fish sandwiches, brisket, or pulled pork. Okay, you get the idea. They make a lot of delicious food to the same standard as their famous roast beef sandwiches, and now I'm starving. I'm going to go to Maverick's Real Roast Beef off Lexington and Roseville, and you need to go too. Check out their menu at maverick'sbeef.com. Have you ever met someone who not only can help you on a deep spiritual level, but also potentially change your life? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who travels the nation and lives right here in the Midwest. And she offers mediumship, mentorship, house and business parties, energy healing, palm readings, and so much more. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. Hi, this is Psychic Medium Deb. I cannot wait to hear from you. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. And welcome back to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. I'm Greg Bach, and thank you very much. Once again, happy post St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone had a good time. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we, we're we having this fantastic conversation tonight. Uh, I was able to uh, get some time with uh, uh, author Tannis Halliwell. We're talking about her book, The Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell. Uh, of course, Lloyd is the, uh, the leprechaun in the story here. And uh, Tannis, one of the things that you had mentioned in... Uh, the last segment was the uh, the fact that now the Western world is is starting to kind of get back that uh, the the energy and being able to see beyond just like what is put in front of them. 
My question to you, though, is why do you think we neglected that for so long? I think it was part of our evolution Mm -hmm. that we wanted to descend further and further into uh, lower frequencies Mm -hmm. um, to learn how to manifest in form. And um, elementals manifest all the form in the world naturally. That is their purpose, to, to create the, uh, the water and the forests and the mountains, the air. That's what elementals do. Mm-hmm. And humans, I believe, uh, were always meant to be co-creators with elementals to create a beautiful world here. Um, and we have always had free will. And we were to use our free will in cooperation. And during the technological age, where we um, moved into wanting to control the earth ourselves, we've lost our connection to spirit. Mm -hmm. And elementals are completely aligned to spirit because natural laws are the same as spiritual laws. But humans have become alienated from both spiritual and natural laws, but we are regaining this now. We're, we're starting to wake up and see what we have lost. That makes sense. That makes sense. I, I also wonder, too, um, recently we, we did a program about just the overall energy of uh, the earth, meaning like the people on it and, and how there's a lot of worry going on. And I wonder if our, our worry in general about things that are happening around the earth starts helping us open up a little bit more, too, because it's like, where else are we going to go? We need, we need more. We need guidance that's beyond what we're seeing in front of us. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, um, I think people don't change until the pain of not changing becomes greater than the pain of changing. Absolutely. That's very, that's very good. I like that a lot. Now, uh, talking about Lloyd, and I just, I, I'm so excited about uh, Lloyd and stuff. You know, one of the things, because you, you had uh, th- uh, very kindly sent me the book, I also went on the Amazon site just to kind of see what, uh, what people thought. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there's, one, there's one review that I, I thought was really interesting. And I was just kind of curious what you think about this. So, so and this is just the first line that they had. And it had me kind of wonder a little bit, too. They just said it's very enjoyable. Uh, I enjoyed reading this. Can't tell you how much was fact and how much was fiction. What do you, what do you think when you hear that? Even though they gave you five stars, by the way. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Um, if people read books about the elementals, and I've written four now, um, and they say it was a great story, I really enjoyed it, and they talk to other people about it, and other people start reading it as well, and they think of it as a great story, because I tried to make books entertaining, like novels, yeah. then that's one level. But what has happened is a seed has been planted in them, a seed of possibility that, as, as the person you quoted said, I don't quite know how much is fact and how much is fiction. So a door is already starting to open. Sure, yeah. And I think that that is great because it, we don't start changing until we start questioning and people, I love it when people have critical awareness and, uh, and question everything because they have to learn to have their own discernment. So I'm fine with it. You, what, you, what you're doing there clearly is you're challenging them without, real, without them realizing that you're challenging them, aren't you? That's, that's true. And Lloyd is a, a challenger. He's challenged me. He's, uh, he's taken me on wild adventures, um, and, and so this is part of elemental nature, actually. Elementals are fun-loving, spontaneous, uncensored, 
So, and when they elementals look at you, whether it's a goblin or an elf or, or, or a leprechaun, when they look at you, they see the potential of who you can become. And they push on the stuck places so that you can get unstuck and become the best of who you can become. And that isn't always kind. They don't think in terms of, oh, I have to be nice here. No, no, no. They (laughs) think of what's the most efficient way to do this. So in a way, they're kind of amoral. They're not immoral. They're amoral. They don't have the same set of laws that we have. <laughs> then, then that makes sense. And I suppose that's why the day sometimes come across as very mischievous, because they're going to be that's doing. It. They're going to that's do something it exactly yeah. because they love to joke, especially leprechauns. Leprechauns are very fast thinking, highly intelligent, and um, they're they are crafty in that they love to ha- try to outsmart you in a way. And I uh, know Lloyd is so happy with me when I can, in a dialogue or anything, outsmart him. It, it shows that he loves it. I bet he thinks that you're, Game. yeah, and that you're you're challenging him. Exactly. And, and it doesn't happen very often, does it? I mean, just in his lifetime, because well, not too often, because yeah. their ele- leprechauns are very fast on their feet. Like literally as well as figuratively, like brain-wise? They, both ways. Yeah. <laughs> both ways. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty... If you think of, like I mentioned earlier on the, about elemental hybrids and the possibility that elementals and other beings have incarnated into human evolution. And I wrote a book on this actually called Hybrid, So You Think You're Human, <laughs> and uh, where I talked about 22 possible kinds of hybrids in human evolution. But one of the things about, about uh, possible leprechaun hybrids, I'll give you an example of two that I believe are leprechauns, okay. one very well-known Robin Williams. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just think of everybody said that he was the the best comic that ever was, right? He was so fast. He didn't need a script. He yep. just was it. He was always in the moment. That uh, I suppose I suppose then that also shows that even though you might be that hybrid, it doesn't it doesn't alleviate those human uh, uh, ghosts, I guess, and demons in you that uh, Rob had had as well. Well, one of the things about elementals is that they don't have the same feelings about uh, suicide that we have, for example. Okay. Um, in our Christian tradition, it is a, a moral sin to kill yourself. Yep. But for in the elemental world... When you um, when you get old um, and life doesn't feel like living anymore, they just fade. Mm. They fade, so they are able to move into non-existence in a, a natural, organic way. Whereas in our human world, you know, thinking about I don't want to be here anymore isn't necessarily going to mean that you're going to die tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I I understand that. Uh, one one other thing too, and, and kind of, and I apologize if I'm jumping around a little bit. But one of the things I found also very uh, interesting, and that we talk about a little bit as well, is you know we're talking about energy as well, right? And I like the fact that uh, when you're talking about you know how the Western civilization kind of kind of in a sense turned its back on understanding more of the higher energies and stuff. But the idea too is like how we kind of think about this stuff, we do segregate, don't we? We put everything into a silo, the general we, I should say, not you, not myself. But there, we, we put stuff in silo. So if we think about elementals, we think of them, they're doing their own thing. What you're talking about is we all should be collaborating together. Yeah, as in how to how to collaborate with them. Is that what you're asking, well, Greg? Well, more of the fact that we that because we see it, a lot of us see it as, you know, elementals exist, we exist, 
we're all in different planes where kind of what you were saying, at least the way I was picking up, is like we should be interacting a lot more together. Well, I agree because we're going to be. Um, as we're moving into a higher frequency, and we are because people are having breakthroughs into different dimensions. I, I mean, I personally don't take psilocybin or hallucinogenics because I don't like, I see other dimensions by themselves. Yeah. But isn't it interesting um, how many people have been taking um, mushrooms and LSD or things like this mm -hmm. to break through um, some sort of block in their consciousness uh, so that they can see and know other dimensions, meaning they want a more spiritual, uh, fulfilled contact with spirit, right? Yeah. So that, um, that allows them to see and know things that maybe mystics have always seen and known or, or psychics have no, seen and known. And I find that interesting that First Nations people have introduced a lot of these um, hallucinogenics to the Western kind of civilized world. <laughs> and I don't mean that pejorative way at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, but they have introduced these things. Um, and this is also uh, helping quite a few people to have their experiences because they're part of if 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 it doesn't happen to me I don't believe it right yeah. some people you've got to you know it, they can't take anything on faith they have to have <laughs> their experience absolutely and so that gives them their experience yeah absolutely and i think that there's there's uh people and i i i probably am one of them myself i mean i'm a I'm a believer, hook, line, sinker. Uh, the the idea, though, trying to get somewhere else, I think I root myself too much on the earth that it makes it hard for me to to astral plane or do anything else that uh, that I really want to do because it's so hard for me to kind of let go. I guess it might be the way I look at it. Well, you know, thanks for mentioning that because. Most humans, and in fact, me too, in a way, I mean, I would just say it's a human failing, this control issue. Mm -hmm. And this has really come out of the, this uh, industrial and technological age, mm -hmm. um, the, this major control issues we have. When And why would we be so worried about losing control? Well, it's because we fear that the enemy is out there. Yeah. Uh, people are basically afraid that there is an enemy. And if they lose control, then, um, you know, they're going to be, if they lose control, bad things could happen. I, I agree with that, but I will also say one of the things when you were talking, one of the things that kind of comes to my mind when I think of myself, I'm afraid to fail. I'm afraid I'm afraid that I'm going to put any kind of effort into it. It doesn't work the first time, which I know that nothing really ever works the first time. And, I, <laughs> and I'm just like, well, forget that. I mean, I, clearly I, I don't – I'm never going to get this. I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, that always seems to be kind of my worst enemy. Oh, that is a great, that's a great insight, actually, because one of the other things that people are have is this feeling of they're not enough, yeah. right? They're yeah. not enough, and how could wonderful things possibly come to them? Because mm -hmm. it, it's sort of like an inferiority complex. Maybe unless you live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, but I think that this is a very common thing for people. And, and elementals are not like that. Elementals are continually experimenting. Like in my book, The Leprechaun Story, which we've been talking about, which is Lloyd's autobiography. I, I mean, I did not write that book. Yeah. Lloyd actually dictated that book to me. He, it, he wrote that book. And, um, 
And one of the things that was funny in in what they're doing now in the elemental world is in the elemental world, uh, the trolls and the goblins and the leprechauns and elves are all trying to work together to uh, to build new architectural structures. And they're having problems with their co-create, co-creative efforts because traditionally trolls hang out with trolls and they work with the rocks and stones and minerals. Elves hang out with elves and they are the royal class and they're, they are into beauty and things like that. And leprechauns hang out with leprechauns and they're craftspeople. And, but what they're doing now in the elemental world, just like we're doing it here in the human world, is they're trying to learn how to work together with all the different castes. And if you think about it, Greg, mm-hmm. this is what's going on in our world right now. It used to be, like a hundred years ago, if you were like white Caucasian and you lived in Minnesota or you lived in Canada like me, mm-hmm. I mean, you may never leave your hometown or you just might meet a whole bunch of the same kind of people. And now we really are a global community and we have intermarriage and inter-everything. So we are experimenting with becoming um, an interdependent um, inter-racial, um, inter-everything um, society, and there's the elementals experimenting too. But you know what? When they build an architectural structure, they don't care if they fail. Yeah. They just laugh at it, and then they try again. But we take it seriously because money is involved. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> one, 100%. Uh, Tannis, why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's take our next break. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk more about Lloyd. We haven't talked about him that much this segment. I want to talk more about him coming up. I have a lot of questions, and we're going to talk more about what Tannis is coming up with next. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refined Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Deb. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh, every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Did you know that spiritual awakening is not all love and light? Surprise! Inner demons, ego deaths, and tower moments are on the horizon. But while life might hand you some harsh lessons, we've got the antidote to soothe your weary soul. Why not try a dragon's bloodbath? Or schedule a Reiki aura repair? With books, herbs, talismans, candles, and more, we put the Shazam in shadow work. Visit Magus Books at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or magusbooks.com. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with Metamorphosisconnections.com. 
MetamorphosisConnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search MetamorphosisConnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. And welcome back to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. My name is Greg Bakken. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And we've been having a fantastic conversation with author Tannis Halliwell. We've been talking about her book, the Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell. And as we are learning from the last segment, it's not her book per se because it's Lloyd's autobiography. So, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, did, you did the typing at least, right? So, I mean, you got that. Yes, I, I, was, the pers- I was the person who was typing it out and making it into a book. So... It wasn't that I didn't do anything, <laughs> but it is his autobiography. So, uh, first of all, for those uh, who are going to want to uh, pick up this book, first of all, you can certainly go to your website, TannisHalliwell.com. That's T-A-I-N-S, or sorry, T-A-N-I-S-H-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L.com. And uh, all sorts of stuff is on here, all about you and about your your speaking schedule and your books and everything else. So uh, definitely got to go out there to TannisHalliwell.com uh, to pick up all the information about what, what you've been up to and what you're doing. So let's see here. Uh, we were talking about Lloyd. Um, and, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you about, we talked a little bit about Astral Plane uh, and 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 stuff. And you said you've been on a lot of uh, adventures with Lloyd. Have you gone? Have you left like your physical realm and traveled with him to different places? Um, <clears throat> I yes. I mean, I well, how to answer that question? I used to take people for twenty two years. I took people to sacred sites around the world mm-hmm. to help find out. <clears throat> what were those sites used for and their acupuncture points on the earth and how to open them up so that the earth energy could flow freely. And I would take people and they would also go through their spiritual experiences too. So that was for healing the earth. And that's what Lloyd and Elementals are interested in. Mm. They want to heal the earth and they want to work with humans who do it. Now, when I travel around the world, because I, I do, I travel physically in an airplane like anyone where else, yep. anyone else would do. But it's for me, it is like tuning a radio. Um, you and I are talking right now, and we are using a certain frequency, and we're having a certain conversation mm-hmm. that belongs to that frequency, and yet. I can stop talking to you, and I can tune into higher frequencies and talk with elementals, or I'm just writing a book right now on dragons and the dragon world. So, because there are many, many worlds, and they all exist in other frequencies, other astral frequencies. So, that's kind of a long-winded answer to your question about how do I do it, and and I can do that anywhere. Sure. Tune in to other frequencies, another world. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, and it is it is certainly not long winded at all because I mean I think there's a lot of people who are listening, and including myself, who um, finds finds that all very fascinating, and and I think some of us are a little uh, jealous of the fact that you're able to do so. 
But I think what it comes down to for those of us, and we kind of touched on this last segment, those of us who are not doing it, and I'm going to use myself as a prime example of this, still are not putting in the time to hone it either. You know, and that's, you yeah, have to do that. Yeah, do and, that. and there's two things I'd recommend. I've been a meditator since I was in my early 20s. And so meditating and many different kinds of meditation... Um, helps to still the mind and improve concentration and open up your intuition. So that would be number one. The other thing I would recommend to people is a lot of people ignore signs from the universe. They, like the universe might just drop hints um, and... And they and people say, "Oh no, that was my imagination," sure. and they they block out these hints. They don't pick up on them, um, and so people need to s- create a pause in their life to start listening with their higher ears in and hearing with their higher eyes to to pick up on the hints that uh, the universe drops in, right in front of us. It, it truly is stop and smell the roses, isn't it? Okay, that one, that was a lead balloon. Because, uh, I mean, that's got kind of what I'm, you know, feel about that is like you stop and you smell the roses, you, you can pick up what's being said around you. Yeah. Yeah, and be closer to nature. I, I'm an organic gardener. I even have fruit trees. Um, I walk in nature daily. Um, it's it's moving into harmony with natural cycles and with the earth. All of these things, realizing that natural laws are the same as spiritual laws, help people to open up these other senses um, and to to raise their frequency and and not to let fear get in the way I do you know as a psychotherapist I, I, I do online courses all the time and right now we're I'm in the middle of doing a five-week program for folks called answer your soul's call and the one that I did in the fall before this one was called freedom from fear mm-hmm. And those go hand in hand if we want to answer our soul's call, which is really to listen to spirit in whatever form that presents to each person. We have to release our fears, as we were talking earlier about releasing our fear of losing control and all the terrible things that can happen to us. We have to take steps. To um, into the unknown, steps into change. Uh, we have to say things that may be un- unpopular, but it's our truth and our reality. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And you know, it's like people already say what well, they, they, you know, they they have that gut intuition about certain things, and they 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 learn. Some people learn to like believe in themselves in that regard. Like, oh. I feel like I should be doing this instead of that. And they don't realize that that can be applied to a much greater level uh, that's, you know, universal, I guess. That's true. You know, if you start listening to the smaller things, after a while you're listening to larger things. Yeah, and then what unfortunately happens, and so they're they're right, something is going to change in them that will change their world. If we start taking enough steps into these higher realities our whole old paradigm for who we are and who are others and what is the world and what should we do with our life all these major questions those all change yeah yeah absolutely it does now i was just curious because as as uh lloyd talked to you about his family had you ever met any of his family or is it always oh, just yes, you have? yes. In, in the book, there's one chapter uh, written by his, uh, his leprechaun lass. 
his uh, his his lady, and I met her when I first was in the cottage in you know thirty years ago, and um, and and I never had a conversation really because she was quite shy at that time, but now she's becoming emancipated, oh. and she's converting all the people in her little town of Kiel in Western Ireland on Ackill Island. Um, and and all the other leprechaun lasses are becoming emancipated as well. <laughs> so yes, I've met her. He has two sons, and one um, is a musician and travels around with elementals, and the other one is um, is a bit of a problem. He's the difficult child. He's the older child. He's the difficult one, but um, he is finding his way. So yes. I've met them. Wow. Wow. Very cool. And as we're, we're running out of time here, we have about uh, a minute and a half, two minutes left. Uh, when, when you went to that cottage 20 years ago, was that where he lived or did he seek you out and that was the place that he needed to meet you at? No, he lived there and he had lived there for over a hundred years. And um, for those, uh, listeners who are suspecting this could all be a fantasy one of the chapters the very last chapter of the leprechaun story his book i go and i interview all the local residents of this town keel and i get all their stories about the history of the cottage and it was built in the 1700s and locally the people call it the fairy cottage because so many people have had experiences, and they call the lane where I was the fairy lane, because so many people have had experience and believe that there are leprechauns in that cottage. The so book, there. <laughs> so there. The book is called The Leprechaun Story, as told by Lloyd to Tannis Halliwell. Uh, Tannis, uh, we can get the book on Amazon, and we can also get it on your uh, website, TannisHalliwell.com. Uh, do you offer signed copies that way? No, I don't. If you go on my website, you, you'll you just get directed to uh, Amazon to to get it, okay. either an e-book or a paper book. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to your listeners, but <laughs> so, nope, so, I don't. But still go to the site, see what Tannis is up to. Tannis, thank you so much for a wonderful conversation. I've enjoyed it too, Greg, and, and do have a, a wonderful uh, life continuing on, and hopefully the elementals will be blessing you, and it's going to open up some of your second sight. Thank you very much. We'll be back tomorrow, everyone. Have a great evening, and take care.